Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? It has been a busy uh, free agent day for the New Orleans Saints. And uh, the, the headliner, if you're just joining us, haven't heard, uh, Chase Young has agreed to terms with the New Orleans Saints' former number two overall pick. Uh, we talked about that early in hour one as Chase Young was making his visit to, uh, to the Saints. And as we've now since learned, apparently his visit started last evening. Chase Young's uh, visit did with dinner with uh, Dennis Allen, uh, with Tyron Matthew as well. And um, it it apparently just continued on. This was courtesy of Jordan Schultz, who said, uh, Jay Shung's recruiting pitch started at dinner last evening with Tyron Matthew, Dennis Allen, defensive coordinator Joe Woods, and defensive line coach Todd Grantham. Uh, clearly continued into today. And, of course, uh, Young now uh, has agreed to a deal with the New Orleans Saints. But... Uh, that's not all. The Saints have agreed to terms with another free agent. We got a little breaking news there, uh, Muse, if you would. What's uh, what's the latest? Looks like the uh, this is according to Ari Mayrov. Myrov. 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 Yeah. Uh, the Saints are expected to sign former Vikings guard slash tackle Oli Udo. One year Udo. deal. Udo. Udo. Yeah. Oli Udo. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Oli Udo. Big Oli Udo guy here. Big you fan. don't know who Oli Udo is. Uh, I'm a big Oli Udo. At least I know how to pronounce his name. You mispronounce his name, Use. Are we positive about that? Yes. I've known Oli for years. No, you years. haven't. I've been a big supporter. He, He's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay. By the way, ask. Muse. Fayetteville, North Carolina. Went to Elon. Uh, where's Elon? Not Musk. Elon. Yeah, where, you know what? Actually, I don't. Is Elon Elon College or Elon University? It's Elon University. Okay. Um, Elon, they're the Phoenix, by the way. They are. It's a great mascot. It's kind of like the. It looks like a flame. It's a good one, man. It's kind of yeah, like it's... a little flame coming out of the thing. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 They're in Elon. Where is that? North Carolina. You should know that Muse from baseball. Elon's been a uh, been a baseball yeah, because because they're in the region. You end up with a lot of midweek games and whatnot with Elon playing North Car you know, the all South important Carolina. Game, well, yeah. they're not important midweek games. You should know that. But Ole Udo, Ole Udo is uh, look came into the league as a six round pick back in 2019. Muse, I was so proud on that day when he heard his name called. Um, and he spent his career so far with the Vikings. Why do you have to do this? You you, and you just heard of him with everybody starts. else. He can play both guard and tackle. I uh, and that. by the way, by the way, something else you probably don't know about Ole Udo, which I know because I'm a big Ole Udo guy and have been for a long time. Ole Udo, he redshirted back in 2014 at, at, Elon, at, at Elon. At Elon. Well, because look. As a member of the Phoenix. He redshirted. He didn't start playing football until late in his high school career, started as a defensive lineman, then moved to the offensive side of the ball. And then, uh, so obviously teams were in late on him. Goes to Elon, red shirts, really started to develop, became a draft pick, started, made 18 career starts there with the Vikings. Um, my guy Phil Mackey, over from from Score, uh, Score North, I, I presented with at, at Barrett Sports Media. Yeah. They're in the Twin Cities. We we had beers and talked about Ole Udo. No, you didn't. We did. Absolutely last week not. In New York. Why wouldn't we? Because Phil doesn't know who Ole Udo is. Oh, come on. All he right. covers yeah, the Vikings. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We talked right. about him. We knew the Saints were in on Ole Udo, oh, so yeah. we talked about this. A little inside info. Never info. missed a game. How about that? At Elon. 45 starts on his college career. That's, that's, ne I mean, never that's missed good. a game. You want, you want the durability. Been super yeah, durable. What do they style. say the best ability is, Muse? Availability. You got it. That's what they say. And that's what Ole is. Available. Now, with Ole Udo coming in, uh, this could mean, and I'm thrilled about that, by the way, big Ole Udo show. We have been here for a long time. Uh, this could mean the end of uh, Andres Pete in New Orleans. It likely does, as a matter of fact. So Ian Rappaport early on Monday tweeted that uh, Saints veteran free agent guard uh, Andres Pete, who started 102 games in New Orleans since 2015, is visiting the Titans today. 
Uh, Titans have already made a couple of offensive line additions, most notably former LSU Tiger Lloyd Cushenberry. By the way, random aside, tangentially if I could, whenever Justin Jefferson and... Jamar Chase signed their new contracts. The 2019 LSU Tigers will have exceeded a billion dollars in contracts. The number, this was as of Tuesday. The number as of Tuesday. So it might have changed between you know, Queen, Patch Queen got his deal. Anyway, the num th this was with Lloyd Cushenberry and Damian Lewis. So this was before, uh, or, um, no, this so that was after include, Patrick Queen. Okay. This includes so after Patrick Queen's deal, eight hundred nineteen million two hundred forty nine thousand four hundred ninety three dollars. The total contra NFL contract value from the twenty nineteen LSU football team. When Jets and Jamar get their deals, it'll go over a billion dollars. Then when Stingley gets his second contract, four years, a huh. billion dollars in four years. How you doing? Greatest team ever. So, so Lloyd Cushenberry, obviously there in Tennessee, Andres Pete. Uh, is taking a visit up there. I, I don't know what's going to happen here with with Andres Pete, but I'll say this: um, I'm not going to argue that Andres Pete has been a great NFL player. He most certainly has not been a great NFL player. However, he has started 102 games and made three Pro Bowls. Now, there's an asterisk with the Pro Bowl because, like, everybody makes Pro Bowl now because nobody wants to play. And so when you make it as an alternate, it's what it is. And he's never played a full season in the NFL as well. So he hasn't been super durable and reliable. But I think Andres Pete is a product of the expectation that comes along with being the 13th overall pick. You draft him 13, and he couldn't play tackle. Couldn't play on the left side, couldn't play on the right side. You had to move him the guard. You draft him at 13, and he became an average NFL starter at offensive guard. You drafted him at 13, and he never played a full season. He always battled nicks and injuries and bumps and bruises. You draft him at 13 and got to a point last year where he had to take a pay cut to stay in New Orleans. And the fact that this guy who started 102 games and has made three Pro Bowls has this soft of a market for his services speaks to the caliber of player that Andres Pete is. So I'm not telling you that Pete has been a great NFL player and you need to keep him by all means and all that stuff. But what I will say is this is a man who started 102 games in the NFL and has made three Pro Bowls. That makes him even still a very rare athlete in the world to make an NFL roster, start 100-plus games in the NFL, and have made three Pro Bowls. Not only that, but he's also a versatile guy who's played guard and tackle for you. And that, I would argue, has been the most valuable part of Andres Pete's contribution. While he's been your starting left guard, when you have had injuries at left tackle, he has kicked out and played left tackle like he did last year. Your Trevor Penning experience went kaboom, and when Hurst got hurt, it was Pete who kicked out and played left tackle. So, I'm not, and I'm not telling you he's an all-pro left tackle, but at least he was able to play it for you at a, at a starting caliber level. Also, despite all of his injuries and all the stuff, he's the anti-Mike Thomas. He's been a good teammate. Like, when in, when in nine years have you heard anything about, about Andres Pete ever being a bad teammate? Ever. So to that extent, I tip my cap, man. Um, I, I don't think, especially with the Ole Udo signing, it seems as though Pete's days in New Orleans are, are done. They're going with a younger guy who's been a who could play inside, outside, a swing guy. He's basically a younger version of Pete. So it's likely they're not going to bring Andres Pete back. Yeah, but if they did, it would be affordable. And maybe that door's not closed depending on what the market looks like. Maybe, hey, you want to come to camp, try to earn a roster spot? Come on. But because of his experience, his versatility, his being a good locker room, but good teammate, I, I wouldn't hate bringing back Andres Pete at the right price. And it's a key part of this whole conversation. This guy was willing to take a pay cut a year ago to stay in New Orleans. So at the right price, 
Not a terrible option. But with signing Ole Udo, it certainly feels like Andres Pete stays in New Orleans as a Saint are, are done. But as that develops, we'll continue to follow. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below. Oh, 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 oh,